All right, so welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. We're going to be checking out some of FlashForge's new machines. Welcome, Nathan. It's our honor to receive you here. Let's start by talking about the Adventure 5M Pro. I had one of these in for testing, and I really enjoyed it. I like how it's quiet, and it's really fast. Was that like a priority when you were designing this thing, or did it well, just happen to be that way? Uh, it's not the priority. I have to tell you the truth that uh, our first priority is uh, reliability with speed. But we know that for the people who are using the office or even using their home, the silence is something really important. Our engineer told me that he designed the machine for the native boys ah. that print the, their model when their parents are sleeping. Ah, okay. I know one of my subscribers yeah. was printing with one of his machines. I won't say which company it's from, but it was so loud his neighbors called the cops on him. I think the cops will not notice that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing about this machine is it also has some built-in air filters. This is something we considered from the beginning we designed the machine. Flashforge, we worked in the education business and we have a lot of partners in the education area. And we know that if we stay in a classroom, we, we hope to be safe. And we hope that no problem with the air. You also have the Adventure 5M non-pro. What's the goal with that model? Well, that one is an open machine for the massive production for some of the parts. OK. For example, if you have a garage and you put a lot of uh, Adventure 5M, they do not have the air filter. But if you're producing this way and to do production, that would be a very perfect product. The Voxelab Aquila is a printer that I tested a long time ago. Yeah. I thought it was a really good value printer. So what's the difference between a FlashForge printer and a Voxelab printer? You can consider like it's an economy and entry level FlashForge. At this moment, the market is changing very fast. So that kind of machine is still selling very well but we are now more focusing on the high speed and reliability. So the other thing I noticed about this machine, and I've seen it on other FlashForge printers, is you have a quick change nozzle system. Yes, when we do the design of the machine, we hear from our customers that they hate it because sometimes it's blocked and they need to clean it quickly. And then we start to think about how we solve the problem. In the old Adventure 3, we start to use this design first, and now you, you only need three seconds to, to detach it yeah. and clean it. It's very fast. I think probably the most difficult and kind of annoying part about 3D printing yeah. is when your 3D printer breaks. And yes. that's one of the most common ways for it to break, is that nozzle to get clogged for some reason or another. Yeah. So being able to just pop it out and put a new one in there just makes that part of it so much easier. From October, we start to send out this uh, Adventure 5M series. And uh, in about one or two months, I think most of the people will receive it. And finally, you will notice that what's our response to the high-speed trains of the market. As always, FlashForge, we don't talk too much about our products. We'll ask your guys to use it. Yeah. And after you use it, you will notice the benefits. We have confidence with the machine. In the future, if we don't have confidence ourselves, we will not put it into the market. So now we're over here with some more expensive looking machines, yeah. maybe industrial grade printers. This one is a Creator 4. We start from this. This is our main machine that we provided for the industrial area. We still have other technology, but for FDM, this is, uh, I think, the most advanced one for us. And this is a big machine with a heating chamber. So it supports the engineering material like uh, ABS and other kind of PC or carbon fibers. This machine is not widely used in the industry, especially the car areas. We know that Hyundai, Mercedes-Benz, and Ford, in some places, they are using this machine. You can see this model. It's uh, something looks strange, right? Yeah, it looks like a wiring harness to me, or it's maybe a, a gauge to test if a part was manufactured correctly. Well, this part is uh, using in the car industry for them to install the tube for the air condition. So these are like uh, manufacturing aids, yes. which I've worked as an engineer before in a manufacturing environment, and 3D printing has really been uh, a boon for them. Yes. Because you know it used to be if you wanted a special tool made, you had to either build it by hand or yeah make a drawing and send it out to a machinist. But now the designer can come up with something and use the geometry references from the CAD model that yeah. you already have yes. and make a perfect part for helping you install things. Yes, and also you can see this from ABS. It's a medical kit that you can see all the structure inside. This looks like almost like an injection molded part. Yes. So is this like a, to prove out the design before you move into production? Yes, you use this to prove the design. And also, this uh, I, I remember that uh, the requirement of this part 
they also request heat resistance. Obviously, this thing can handle ABS, but what other materials can it do? Normally, people use a PACF, the carbon fiber material. One thing I've noticed is if you don't have a heated chamber, ABS parts don't work very well because they warp so bad. Yeah, this machine, as we are using for industry level, they don't have chance to fail and print again. So uh. that is why we need to make it heated and print everything once. You can't just say, okay, well, actually, uh, we got to do this next week. <laughs> yeah. Last question about this is, uh, what are some of the, the specs on this machine? So like print volume and cost? The cost, I think the, our distributor has the cost. Okay. The printed size, this is around uh, like 16 inch. So like 350-ish, yeah. uh, maybe a little more. All right, and then uh, we've got one more over here. So what is this one? This is the new designed Guider 3 Ultra. It's a kind of machine that's big, industrial, and fast. The speed can reach 500 millimeters, and the acceleration is around 10,000. So you can consider that the speed of uh, Adventure 5M is the same here. Yeah. But it's a very large and uh, industrial level machine. It could support the carbon fiber easily. And we also use this in many industry customers in China already. Okay. And we're sending out now to US and other countries. So why is the, the plastic film still on here? Is this one going to a customer after this? <laughs> yes, I'm, I suppose so. <laughs> That's one thing I noticed is with these high-speed printers that are hitting the consumer market, we've really started expecting prints to get done really fast, but industrial-grade printers haven't really caught up. Well, the industrial level actually I think the, the, the issue is, firstly, they need reliability. They need to print once and success. But they still need speed. They, they don't have because the people don't offer them, and we are offering now. So this is a Core XY construction as well? Uh, yes, and dual extruder. So tell me about dual extruders and why someone might need that. Someone will use it for several reasons. Some people will need to print in two color. Some people doing the mirror printing for two components in one time. Some people maybe need two extruders as an alternative. When one extruder is ah. uh, blocked, they use another one. Well, hopefully we'll see that crossover into the Adventure 5M maybe one day. Uh, Could be well, interesting. So next year, you can, you can have some kind of expectation. Okay, I guess we're gonna leave that as vague as possible to build suspense. That's another interesting thing about FlashForge is you kind of have a market for the consumer grade and the industrial grade. So it allows you to kind of cross-pollinate ideas between those two kind of customer bases. So yes. you can see the speed that you're getting from the uh, consumer grade printers is kind of transferring into these industrial grade printers. In the beginning, when our company works on the 3D printer, we start from the consumer part. But we see that in the real market, the industry level machines are really well needed. And the massive production is a final destination for our 3D printing industry. So we also pay a lot of attention on the industry level, uh, not only in the FDM technology, but also other technologies. We hope that we're not only doing something to, to make toys, we do something that make real components and for real production. In some industries, the accuracy and the material for FDM is not enough. And then we do an investigation on the jewelry industry, and we found out the wax jetting, a kind of ink jetting, but with wax, is widely used in this uh, area. You can see very thin parts of the jewelry. Once it's casted, the most thinnest parts we can reach about 0.3 millimeter. Wow, yeah, those are incredibly detailed. To deal with the wax mold, you also need to be very careful. When you put it into the wax tree and then do the casting, also need some people really professional. Yeah, this is so a wax tree. So basically when you cast this, you pour it and the uh, metal flows down this column and it fills in all of these jewelry pieces. And you can notice this, this parts are, are empty inside. This kind of design, if you do it manually, it's very difficult to do. And now it's normal as every kind of jewelry. And uh, when you're making something out of gold, you know, you don't want to be paying for all that gold inside yeah. if you We, we if you will not take it. that here. Yeah. Someone will rub it and go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This machine is a revolutionary design because it has uh, three print heads. Normally the wax jetting system, they only have one. So they need to print three times. With our design of three print heads, three times higher efficiency in the production. So this machine is now very widely used in the jewelry production area. That was going to be one of my questions is, yeah. what's the main application for this type of printer? Because, you know, you, over there we were talking about prototyping yeah. and uh, plastic parts. So these are wax, so they're not very strong. So uh, this 
coming to the question, how the people do the jewelry? So normally, they use a wax model and put it to, into the plaster. Then pick the plaster and the wax, then the wax will melt. So they start with you know, your CAD model, and then you have to machine a mold out of aluminum, and then you injection mold the wax parts, yes. and then you have to clean those up because there's like parting lines and all sorts of issues. And then you cast it into the other shape, and then you melt it out, and it, there's so many steps. Yes. And what it sounds like this machine is able to do is remove some of those steps, while also being able to do really fine details. Actually, it's removed a lot of steps. The traditional way to do jewelry, you need 12 days from the first design to the final products. And now we make it to five days, and in some cases, with a very whole and mature industry, it can, can be two or three days. Later, I can send you the videos, or you can check on our official YouTube channel. You can see the whole procedure, how we do this in the jewelry industry, how we make the efficiency higher, and help the manufacturers to earn more money. Aside from jewelry, do you find applications in industrial uses or industrial like dentistry? Use, yes, in dentistry, the casing part is still a very small part. Uh, I think mostly people are using the reading machines. Okay. But in the industry, it's generally used for the place with uh, investment casing. You know the turbo fan for the cars to have the turbo? Yeah, yes. the turbocharger. They use this technology to make the components. And we, our company, we are offering to some of these customers too. What makes wax better than a resin-based investment casting process? First reason is that if you're doing with a resin, you have a lot of support. If you take out the support manually just for one piece, okay, you, it's acceptable, but our goal is to do massive production. Okay. So you cannot do for 1,000 pieces. You can notice that in one board, we have a record that in one board, we produce 1,100 pieces of rings wow. in about uh, 10 hours. And then how do you image with this uh, very thin part? You cut everything manually. That's really interesting. So yeah. one thing about resin is that basically your model and your support material have to be made out of the same plastic. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to remove it. If you use resin to do some of the tubal structure, you have support inside. But with our technology, you see the purple wax is supported by the white one. Okay. And the white wax, if you put it into our liquid to clean it, it will resolve and only left the purple one. So in this way, you take out the, the support easily. Okay, so you just dissolve it. And the second part for the resin in the casing industry, it's not so easy to case. Because the resin, if you make it, make the temperature higher, it will come into a point that it turns to be gas. Mm -hmm. If you don't uh, control this curve very well, it will break your mold. Okay. But with wax, this curve is very easy to control. Right. And, and everyone knows how to use it. You need to consider in a massive production area, you want to make 1,000 pieces of rings. Yeah. So how many losses you can accept? 200 or 100? Well, the people accept nothing. So finally, they choose the wax system to print this uh, kind of rings because if you use uh, resin, maybe you will lose 20, 50. Right, and gold's can, expensive. Yeah, and you cannot send this to customer and saying, okay, I will send you another 50 later. All right, Gustav, well, it was nice meeting you nice and meeting great you. to see all these products from Flashforge, especially that wax stuff. I think a lot of people haven't heard of that before, but you know, for the industry that it's in, I think it's a big deal. Well, we also really thanks for your help to showing so many things exciting to the audience. Flashforge with two new factories set it. We really have confidence that we can design more and more excited products, not only in the commercial level, but also in industry level to help our customers. All right, well, thanks everyone for watching and uh, check out some of Flashforge's printers. They're working on some really amazing stuff.